Well, good evening, everyone. I'm so glad to be back with you after more than a month's uh, lapse since my last virtual concert. And of course, of all nights, I chose October 1st, the night that my neighbor seems to be cutting down a tree on the other side of the road. So I hope that the noise is not too uh, annoying and does not interrupt the concert too much. Perhaps it will be uh, over here pretty soon and the chainsaw will be turned off. <laughs> you have to laugh at life sometimes, I suppose. I have been wondering when there would be a time at which my concert would be interrupted by noise from my neighbors. It seems like tonight is going to be the first time that has happened, um, at least to a, a large degree. Anyway, it's so nice to be with you, and tonight's concert is called Fabulous Film Music. I sent out both an email and Facebook notifications this week that I would be resuming virtual concerts, so hopefully many of you got the promotional email as well as the Facebook notifications. And, <laughs> yeah, someone says, start off with a Lumberjack song. Wouldn't that be funny? Well, uh, thank you all for joining in and listening tonight. And of course, I have done uh, several concerts before of movie music, but um, someone specifically requested, one of my listeners, that I feature cartoon themes. And I really don't have enough of those in my fingers to do an entire concert of those. So I thought, well, I'll just do kind of a combination of, of things, including some cartoon themes, um, music from movie musicals, and we're going to start out with a couple of silent movie themes going way back to the earliest days and these first couple of songs I suppose would be considered ragtime and the first one I'm going to play uh, dates to 1919 it was named for the silent movie star Theda Berra this is The Vamp Thank you so much. Well, that was a fun start to tonight's virtual concert, The Vamp. Johnny Maddox told me that the 
melody of the chorus of that song is based on an aria from the opera Madame Butterfly. And I forget exactly which one, but I thought that was interesting, and I never would have recognized that. You know, something else unusual about that tune is that uh, the performances of that song always end with the verse, uh, with almost 99% of the pop songs of that period, you'd always end with the chorus. You almost never end with the verse of the song, but it certainly works very well. Now let's do another silent movie tune, uh, written in 1921 by the uh, prolific Ten Pan Alley songwriter, Ted Snyder, uh, who was also in the music publishing business. This was written in honor of Word of Valentino's movie, The Sheik. The Sheik of Araby. Thank you very much. Well, how does the piano sound? Oh, I still hear the chainsaw. Hopefully it doesn't come through on the cell phone too much. Carl says, Adam, how were your trips? I had a very good time, and uh, they were all fairly successful performances. And, um, but that said, I was quite jet-lagged this week and really did not completely get over the jet lag until about a day or two ago. And uh, today is about the first day I've had it home to myself to clean the house or get groceries or practice the piano at all in about a month. So I was happy to have a little time to myself today. And you know, when I'm able to uh, spend time practicing and uh, uh, concentrate on the virtual concert ahead of time on Sunday and I don't have other things going on, I feel like I play better. And um, too bad there's a chainsaw going across the street in the middle of the concert. 
Um, well, I'm certainly going to do a lot of famous tunes, uh, songs that I hope you will recognize, and uh, feel free to send in requests, as always. I, I bet I will be able to get to a lot of them tonight, because movie songs are usually very famous tunes. And uh, let's do one now, which most people associate with Gene Kelly, but it really was written many years earlier for the Hollywood Review of 1929, uh, one of the big MGM movies of that year, and it, the song was introduced by Cliff Edwards, the one and only Ukulele Ike. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he was a huge star of the period and went on to do voice work for Disney. He was the voice of uh, Jiminy Cricket in Pinocchio. Here's Singing in the Rain. so much. Uh, Dave, yeah, um, he says he's listening carefully to the piano. Is it less bright? Yes, um, the last time that uh, Chris was here he did voice the hammers. Um, I think it's a good thing because I, I probably wear out the um, voicing on the hammers pretty quickly and the upper register is still kind of bright. He didn't do the upper register for some reason. I forget exactly why. I'll just have to ask him about it next time I see him, but, um, you know, the tuning is holding pretty well, all things considered. It's been a while since my piano technician was here, and uh, I now have a damp chaser on the back of this piano. Perhaps that is why the tuning has held pretty well for um, well over a month now. So fingers crossed. Uh, incidentally, if you're just joining me or if you're new to uh, these virtual concerts, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. All you have to do is send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo, just like you would do in person. And the information should be in the chat and the postings on all three websites. Um, no obligation, of course, but if you enjoy this kind of vintage music, it is very helpful to my career. This is something I discovered during the pandemic. I, you know, I could do some work online as well, and that's what I'm trying to continue to do. And um, 
Let's see. I'm probably going to stick mostly to movie songs tonight, uh, but happy to take requests. Uh, that's probably why I won't do 12th Street Rag. Let me check Facebook here. Oh, good. We've got over 50 viewers on uh, Facebook. That's fantastic. Oh, Dwayne, so good to hear from you. It's been a while. And Marilyn and Bill, gosh, it's been so long. Who, who is this? Bill Huffman says, uh, glitches on Facebook. Oh, I didn't see it. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think there's any problems tonight, thankfully. You'll never know. I see a request for that. Yes, I'm going to play that. And, um, I'm going to do a medley of songs associated with uh, the musical star Alice Faye tonight. So... I'll uh, play that in maybe just a little bit. When I play uh, my concerts, I kind of like to go chronologically through the history of the music. So let me play one for you now that was written in 1930 for probably the most important movie that was released that year. And uh, it was made by Universal. They finally did a multi-million dollar restoration of this movie a few years ago. It's called King of Jazz. It stars Paul Whiteman and his orchestra. It's one of the few... Uh, ways that we have to see Paul Whiteman's band on film in the 1920s, uh, which was one of the greatest popular dance bands of the era. And you get to see musicians like Roy Barge playing the piano, playing Rhapsody in Blue. And Bing Crosby was with Whiteman's orchestra at that time. It was his first movie. And uh, so here is one of the greatest songs from the movie. I'm just going to play this one by itself. We're going to do Happy Feet. It's happy feet. I've got those happy feet. Oh, I know all the words to it. Oh, this is embarrassing. Happy feet. I've got those happy feet. Give them a low down beat and they begin dancing. 
I've got those ten little tapping toes, and when they hear a tune, I can't control my dancing feet to save my soul. Weary blues can't get into my shoes because my shoes refuse to ever grow weary. I grow cheerful on an earful of music sweet. I've got those hap hap happy feet. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Hello from Keswick, the English Lake District. My goodness, greetings to you in England. Nice to have you with us tonight. Let me check for some requests here. I see a request for, oh gosh, I don't know that Irving Berlin song. That's gonna be, it's gonna be very obscure. Hello to my friends in Hecktown, East Tennessee. Nice to have you uh, back with me tonight. Thanks for listening. Um, Again, going chronologically here, I'll do one more medley of tunes, and then uh, we'll do the Alice Faye songs, since I did have a request for one of those. Uh, I'd like to play for you music from a Warner Brothers movie, which really made some of the very best musicals in the early 30s, the, the very beginning of the talkies uh, in motion pictures. And uh, I have played 42nd Street and those songs so many times I thought, oh, it's time that I dig out the songs from Footlight Parade again. It's a similar movie, at least in, in spirit and with music by the same composer and lyricist, Harry Warren and Al Dubin, a few of the same stars, Dick Powell, Ruby Keeler, Jimmy Cagney. Uh, if you've never seen Footlight Parade, it's well worth seeing. It's one of those great Busby Berkeley musicals with his fabulous choreography. And I'm going to do three of the songs for you from this movie, I had to dig out the sheet music because I haven't played them in so long. I'll show you all three sheet music covers because they're slightly different. Uh, first in the medley will be Honeymoon Hotel. You can see Dick Powell and Ruby Keeler on the cover there because they sing Honeymoon Hotel. And then By a Waterfall, one of the most beautiful songs from the movie. And you can see the uh, dance sequence there with the waterfall on the cover. And I just, I just noticed that By Waterfall was not written by Harry Warren. It's Sammy Fain and Irving Cahill. And we'll wind up with the song that's the grand finale of the movie, Sh Shanghai Lil. And you can see Jimmy Cagney there on the cover of the music, since he's the one who performs it in the movie. Okay, next up, my medley from Footlight Parade. I might even steal the sheet music here for uh, a couple of these songs. Let's see, which one do I actually need it for? I don't really. It's just a crutch. Footlight Parade.
Light Parade. Thank you so much, folks. Okay, well, I guess it's time to go on to the Alice Faye medley. Of all the great musical stars of the 1930s in classic musical film and 40s as well, uh, I think one of the best was Alice Faye. You know, of course, at that time she was competing against such talented stars as you know, Bing Crosby and even uh, Shirley Temple at Fox Studios where she worked. But I think she had uh, one of the greatest uh, careers of the period and was in some of the very best musicals. So uh, some time ago I concocted a medley of hit songs from her movies. Uh, I have friends who are music collectors that knew her personally, and that's one of the reasons that I became very interested in, in uh, Alice Faye and, and her music. Um, so it starts out with You'll Never Know, which was one of the greatest hits of World War II. She introduced it in the movie Hello Frisco, Hello. And then after You'll Never Know, I'll play two songs from the movie The Gang's All Here, which was made the same year in 1943, one of the most spectacular Technicolor, Busby Berkeley musicals of the period. And those two songs are No Love, No Nothing, and A Journey to a Star. And after that, the one that's probably the most obscure in the medley is a song from, I think the movie's called That Night in Rio, and the song is called Tropical Magic. Alice is just beautiful when she sings that song. And so after a Tropical Magic, then I'll do two songs from the movie that Alice made with Dick Powell which is called On the Avenue. We'll do uh, the two classics, uh, both by Irving Berlin. I've got my love to keep me warm and wind up the whole thing with slumming on Park Avenue.
Thank you so much. All right, all songs performed and introduced by Alice Faye. <clears throat> Let me double check all the websites here. I haven't seen any glitches. Uh, I only see one, um, only saw one comment as far as uh, video glitches. Oh, I see a request here from the great Richard Glazier. If you're still listening, Richard, let me know. I'll play that for you here. Uh, he's on Facebook. Richard is a uh, uh, fabulous pianist and um, particularly <laughs> an expert on George Gershwin. He met and played for Ira when he was a young man. Oh, get, getting a comment here from someone that says, uh, they were at the Ragtime Festival in Pennsylvania as well. So nice to see you. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Richard is not here anymore. Regardless, please uh, send in some more requests here, folks. Let me sit down and uh, go ahead and <clears throat> send in some requests. And it may take a couple uh, until I find one that I'm, I'm ready to play. And uh, not only that, there's a slight delay in the chat, you know, before I see what you're typing. <clears throat> I have some more things planned ahead of time that I'm going to play for you, but um, I'm going to take lots of requests tonight. Misty, no, nah, that wasn't used in a movie, I don't think. Over the Rainbow, I'm definitely going to play that. I might save it again more towards the end of the movie. Flying Down to Rio. Oh, you know what? I think I can play a song from that movie for you. Let me give it a shot. Um, there's a wonderful tango that was written for that movie. Uh, the music was written by Vincent Humans, who was uh, one of the greats of the American songbook, even though his name is not quite as well remembered. He wrote a lot of classics like Tea for Two and I Want to Be Happy. And... Um, uh, so, I, I only know this one song from Flying Down to Rio. Incidentally, if you haven't seen it, it's Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers' first movie that they made together. 
And this is a real pretty tango called Orchids in the Moonlight. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> Orchids in the Moonlight. Thank you very much. It's one of those songs I haven't played in a while and I had to think pretty hard, but I got, got through it there. Yeah, isn't that a beautiful tune, Jim? Um, yes, I'm going to do some Disney songs as well towards the end of tonight's concert. But go ahead and send in some, uh, some more requests. Uh, yes, I know there's a lot of music to choose from as far as cartoons. But I, you know, it's, it's not the kind of thing that I ever get requests for. So I don't know anything like from Fleischer cartoon shorts. Um, I know popular songs that would have been used in cartoons, of course. I did see a request a while back here for Hello, Dolly. You know, I could do that uh, because it was uh, certainly well known as a movie tune. So uh, why don't I go ahead and do that for you now? Maybe I'll break the mold here a little bit. Uh, the way I play Hello, Dolly! is I always do it with um, Mame, which is another tune written for Broadway by the same composer, Jerry Herman. Uh, I like his music very much, even though it's a little bit more contemporary. These are songs that were written in the 60s for Broadway, and I'll, uh, I'll break the mold here tonight and do it for you just a little bit. Uh, this is Bob Kerr on... Uh, on YouTube it requested this. Yes, let's do it. We're going to do Hello Dolly and Maine. Thank you. 
by the great Broadway songwriter Jerry Herman. And of course, Hello Dolly was later made into a movie, so it counts for tonight. I see a re request here for As Time Goes By from Casablanca. Well, uh, let me go ahead and play that for you now, since it's one of the most famous movie tunes. I don't think 1943 is quite right. I think the movie was 1942. And the song was written 11 years before that, in 1931, for a Broadway show called Everybody's Welcome. And in the early 30s, uh, the man who had the hit record on this tune, believe it or not, was Rudy Valley. But of course, everyone now associates it with Casablanca, one of the great classic movies of all time. So here's As Time Goes By. There's a wonderful little bell-like chime uh, figure in the music, in the original sheet music, which hardly anyone seems to play, so I use that in my arrangement. As time goes by, thank you very much. You know, I normally play that with Over the Rainbow as well, because those are two of the most famous movie songs of all time. And so why don't I go ahead and play Over the Rainbow for you now? But I decided to dig, up, dig out the sheet music today so I could play for you the verse to the song as well. Now, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Judy Garland sang the verse to the song in the movie. And uh, it's really quite a beautiful and complex song. Harold Arlen wrote the music for The Wizard of Oz. Lyrics were written by E.Y. Harburg. His nickname was Yip Harburg. And so uh, here is Over the Rainbow. <clears throat>
Over the Rainbow. Thank you very much, everybody. I was playing that song recently, and uh, because I looked at the original sheet music, I realized I, I had been playing it with wrong chords for years. You have to look very carefully at this old sheet music to get the chords right. Now, um, people who play in a more modern jazz style change chords on purpose, but I think uh, the harmonies that were originally written back in the 1920s and 30s for many of these jazz standards are more appealing to listen to. It's just my two cents. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and make an announcement or two. Um, uh, if you're just joining me uh, or maybe listening for the first time, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. All you have to do is send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo. And if you don't trust PayPal, uh, I have a P.O. box on my website for checks as well. And um, I suppose that applies to Venmo as well since PayPal owns Venmo. <laughs> Doesn't make much difference. My goodness, I have a lot of viewers on Facebook tonight. I can't believe it. It's 115. It hasn't been that high in a long time. Hmm. Uh, let me see now. I see a request here for a song that I could certainly play. Yes, do hit the like, like button, everybody. That's on Facebook and YouTube as well. I would really appreciate that. It helps with the social media algorithms and so forth. I see a request here from SkySox44 for Lullaby of Broadway. Tell me what your real name is again. I know you've told me before. I just can't remember all the YouTube handles. You know, um, I could certainly play Lullaby of Broadway. In fact, uh, let me think. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play two songs for you that w were uh, Academy Award winners the very earliest days of the movies. The, I'm going to try and play from memory the uh, very first song to win the Academy Award for Best Song, in, which was not given out until 1934. We're going to do the Continental from The Gay Divorce with the Stair and Rogers, and then I'll try and play Lullaby of Broadway. Oh, that's Mike. Yeah, Mike from Colorado Springs, right? Oh, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Wish I could remember all those goofy names on uh, YouTube, but I can't. So uh, let me play these, these songs for you now. We're going to do The Continental and then Lullaby of Broadway, which won the Academy Award for Best Song the next year in 1934.
you very much. There's a couple of early Academy Award winners. I've never thought of playing those songs together. You know what would be fun is to do some more of them, just go year by year, the songs that uh, won uh, Academy Awards uh, for best song. Oh, the third man theme. There's a tune I can do for you. I was just about to ask for some more requests, so uh, let me do that for you now. This tune uh, is quite simple, but you know, simple doesn't mean bad. It, it is very catchy. In fact, Johnny Maddox loved it so much, he asked me to play this at his funeral, and sure enough, I did. <laughs> the tune was written uh, for the movie The Third Man with Orson Welles and Joseph Cotton, I think, 1949, uh, which, of course, then by then, traditional jazz was, was uh, dead and just barely starting to make a, a revival. The song was written for an instrument called the zither. I don't think I have ever seen a zither in person. That would be really neat. And, and I imagine The Third Man is also my favorite of the Orson Welles movies. It's, it's easier to understand than Citizen Kane. That's my opinion on it. Here's The Third Man theme for Knee Top on YouTube. Another one of the YouTube handles. I'm sorry, I don't remember what the real name is. Help me out. <laughs> the Third Man theme. Thanks so much. That's the third man theme for Tom on YouTube. See, isn't that better? I can, I can uh, give the real name when I'm playing a request for someone. You got it. Yeah, the viewership is really high tonight. I'm really thrilled with this. It's, it's about 100 on YouTube and 100, and, or 100 on Facebook and 120 on YouTube. That is fantastic. I appreciate all of you listening tonight. I guess that tells me that I'm not going to lose my audience if I have to take a couple of weeks off from virtual concerts due to travels or you know family obligations or whatever. That it's good to know that um, uh, you are all sticking with me uh, for for these virtual concerts into the future. I appreciate that very much. And um, now let's go into the cartoon theme portion of tonight's concert. I, I only have about. I don't know, three, three or so to play for you. And then I'm going to do some of those Disney songs. Yes, uh, definitely, Jim. Um, in fact, these first cartoon themes are associated with Disney. I'm going to play for you a tune that was written way back in 1910 by the Layton Brothers, who were a vaudeville team of the ragtime era. And the Layton Brothers are the ones who uh, were the first to publish Frankie and Johnny in 1912. But two years before that, 1910, they came out with a song called Steamboat Bill. And I guarantee you will recognize the melody because a few years later, in 1928, Walt Disney used Steamboat Bill as the theme music for uh, the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie. So the song is not called Steamboat Willie. It's Steamboat Bill, written by the Layton Brothers. And let's see. Yeah, I might even put in a little bit of turkey on the straw because they use that in the cartoon. That'd be kind of fun. 
Steamboat Bill. Steamboat Bill. I learned that tune and committed it to memory because I used it uh, for the silent movie Steamboat Bill Jr. with Buster Keaton. I played for that movie earlier this summer. So uh, there's a little tune from Steamboat Willie. And now, uh, from about two years later, I'm going to play the theme song that was written and used later during the opening credits for all of the Mickey Mouse cartoons. The tune was written by a man named Carl Stalling who worked for Disney uh, in 1930. So the very earliest Mickey Mouse cartoons did not have this theme song yet, but uh, by 1930, I think they all included this tune, which is called Minnie's Yoo-Hoo. <laughs> it's a very rare piece of music. I have an original copy of it. Minnie's Yoo-Hoo. Minnie's you hoo And, uh, okay, uh, let me play one more theme for you, and I might have time for another request or two. Uh, this is a popular song, Words and Music, by Cliff Friend and Dave Franklin, the writers of When My Dream Boat Comes Home. Uh, they were prolific Tin Pan Alley writers, and it was written as just an independent popular song. 
1937, but you will all know the melody. The tune is called The Merry-Go-Round Broke Down, and the reason you will all probably know this is uh, because it is the theme song from the Looney Tunes cartoon shorts. And I've been playing this for years, but I dug out the sheet music so I could play the verse for you as well. Let's see. Time for some more requests. Oh, I see a very nice request here that I could certainly play for you. Uh, Frank Merrily, we roll along is a great idea, but um, just didn't have time to learn it for tonight's concert. You know, there's a limited amount of time that I have to learn new material for one of these virtual concerts when I do one every week. And in fact, I, I do want to say that, um, especially when I'm traveling, I apologize if I can't respond to all of you by email or answer your requests, especially, especially in like a Facebook message. Um, I do get a lot of them now. I, and I think part of that is because of the virtual concerts. Of course, there were a lot of videos of my performances on YouTube going back years before I ever tried an entire virtual concert. but. Uh, I, I guess this online presence has caused, uh, I, I get a heck of a lot of messages from all over the country, um, even in Europe and, and so forth and other parts of the world. I do my best to respond to all of them, uh, but can't quite do it all. Um, oh, greetings in Australia. How nice to hear from you. Yes, I'm going to do uh, the, the uh, Disney music at the very end of the concert. Um, but I got a request here from Leo Roth, who's a young ragtime pianist. He wants me to play my Shirley Temple medley. So let me try and play that for you now. I did the Alice Faye songs. We have to represent Shirley Temple. She was the other biggest star at Fox Studios in the 1930s. In fact, I think she, she probably outperformed um, Alice Faye in uh, box office sales. I don't know. Uh, Shirley Temple was very talented, but one of the reasons I'm sure that she was such a star is that she brought a lot of joy to people during a difficult time in the Great Depression. And I'm going to play um, four songs from her movies for you, starting out with um, On the Good Ship Lollipop, which is from the movie Bright Eyes, and I had the pleasure of getting to know Jane Withers, who was in that movie with Shirley Temple. And then uh, after uh, On the Good Ship Lollipop, we'll do... Um, Animal Crackers in My Soup from Curly Top, I think is the name of the movie. And then uh, a beautiful ballad that was written for one of the movies that, that Shirley made with Alice Faye 
she made two with Alice, and um, this is from the movie Stowaway, and it's a song called Good Night, My Love. And I'll wind up the whole medley with my favorite, which is at the Codfish Ball from Captain January.
you very much. Okay, there's my Shirley Temple medley. Um, <clears throat> I was going to make an announcement earlier that I forgot, which is I have already decided on the theme for next week's virtual concert. I, I went back and looked at uh, some of the previous virtual concerts, which are uh, still on my YouTube channel, and the two, uh, on YouTube at least, that have the highest number of views. It surprised me a little bit. Number one, with over 10,000 views, is, um, or close to it, is the Honky Tonk Piano Night. And I believe in about second place with several thousand views is uh, Boogie and Blues Night. And uh, I'll, I guess I'll say just briefly that uh, the fact that the Honky Tonk Piano Night has the highest number of views is a little frustrating to me as, uh, you know, I consider myself a, a professional ragtime pianist. The, uh, Johnny used to say there is no such thing as, as honky-tonk, really. It's just ragtime played on out-of-tune pianos. So I, I probably did a lot of tunes from the 50s that night. Maybe that's why the view count is high. Uh, that's a little frustrating. <laughs> but maybe it was a good concert. I don't even remember. I didn't watch it. I never listened to myself play. Um, but, uh, so what I decided to do is I'm going with the, the, the theme that was in second place, which is Boogie and Blues. So I'm going to do that again for you next week. It has been at least a year, maybe a little more, since I've done a Boogie and Blues concert. So get ready for a lot of music by W.C. Handy and the Boogie Woogie of Mead Lux Lewis. It'll be a fun uh, concert next Sunday night, and you don't have to wait a week this time. So I hope you will all join me again. And in the meantime, uh, let me think. Well, I do have time for... Um, one more request, and I see one that I can play, so I'll try and go ahead and do it for you. Leo asks, will you continue doing this every week from now until spring? Well, I, I do it every week that I can. I do it every week throughout the year that I'm home. That's really how it works. There will be times I won't be able to do it. I already have a lot of bookings in April of next spring, so I won't, uh, probably won't be able to do it every week, but um, it will be every week for the several coming weeks. Let's put it that way. As many as I can do. Whenever I'm home and I don't have something uh, that I can't get out of, then uh, of course I, I will always do a virtual concert and um, I'll be away at Christmas time and so forth as well. But um, I see a request from Frank for At the Ball, That's All. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play two songs that were featured in a Laurel and Hardy movie. So uh, these were not written for movies originally, but it's such a famous movie, perhaps it's worth doing. And um, it's way out west with Laurel and Hardy. I'm going to do uh, The Trail of the Lonesome Pine and with it, At the Ball, That's All. Two ragtime era songs performed in uh, one of the most popular movies of Laurel and Hardy. <laughs>
version of it for you anyhow. Well, now the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going to play my full Disney medley. I am altering it slightly. I've been playing a medley of Disney songs for many years, 15 or 20 years, and I'm altering it slightly because I already did Minnie's yoo uh, the Mickey Mouse theme song, and um, I'm going to leave out It's a Small World tonight and so the songs from the Disneyland theme park because those are not from movies. But you will uh, get to hear a lot of uh, the, uh, songs from classic Disney movies. Uh, personally, I think Walt Disney was a genius, and he certainly knew the power of music and what it could do for his movies. He had a lot of brilliant musicians that worked for him, um, like Frank Churchill, who wrote the music for, for um, Snow White, and, um, oh, what's the name of the man that... Um, uh, Lee Harline, who wrote the music for Pinocchio. Uh, here's the original sheet music cover for Snow White, since I just happened to have this on the piano. It was Disney's first feature-length movie in 1937, the first feature-length cartoon, which was really a big deal when that came out. So I'm going to do three songs from Snow White. We'll do uh, uh, Hi Ho, the Dwarves' marching song. We'll do Whistle While You Work, and then Someday My Prince Will Come followed by uh, When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio, and then two songs from Dumbo, believe it or not. We'll do Casey Jr. and When I See an Elephant Fly, and I'll close the medley tonight and the entire concert with zippity doo from Song of the South. I'm looking at the, uh, the numbers. Wow, very high numbers on Facebook tonight. I, I thank you, folks. That's unusual. Hmm. Okay, Disney time.
thank you so much. Well, that's my Disney medley, and I think I will conclude the concert with that tonight. Thank you so much for listening, folks. It's so wonderful to have so many people uh, watching the concert tonight. I thank you for listening to this very old music, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I, I certainly did. It was nice to get back to doing this. And uh, like I said, there'll be another virtual concert next week on all three websites, Facebook, YouTube, and even Twitch. And um, the theme will be Boogie and Blues. So keep that in mind, and I will look forward to getting all of your requests. And if you enjoy this kind of music, consider leaving a virtual tip for me as well, and that will help me keep it alive. I appreciate it very much. Good night for now, folks. Thanks again.